Whoa, that is a lot of blood cells. Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about this really interesting study that came out not so long ago that was able to answer the question of how many cells our body generates pretty much every second. And at the same time, it was also able to estimate the total number of cells in our bodies. And the number is kind of mind-blowing. But let's talk a little bit more about this because there are a lot of cool things you're going to learn about your own body today. First of all, we know that our bodies regenerate cells pretty much at all times. Every single second, a new cell is generated somewhere in our body. Okay, not just one cell, many cells. But I guess one natural question one might have is, well, do we actually get regenerated completely? Do we become a new person, physically speaking, every few years or so? And the answer to this, according to the study, is actually no. Well, most studies have answered this question a long time ago. Certain cells in our bodies are with us forever. For example, brain cells. Brain cells, once you get them, they kind of stay in there until you're no longer you. But the majority of the cells in your body do actually regrow and replenish with time. And actually, even some parts of the brain have recently been discovered to have this ability, specifically cells in the hippocampus region. So, in other words, we're actually learning new things about even the brain and brain regeneration. Also, several studies have discovered a way to regenerate brain in mice, but that's not something we can do in humans just yet. And except for the brain tissue, the only two other things that do not regenerate in your body are your animal in your teeth, the white stuff, that basically protects your teeth, and the other thing is the lens of your eye. So those are the cells that never change. Everything else, though, does change and quite frequently. For example, the cells inside your stomach, the ones that are lining the stomach and have contact with the acid that's responsible for breaking down all of the food that we eat, regenerate every two days. And that's one of the fastest regeneration rates in your body. The cells inside our skin are usually replaced every two to three weeks. Which means that every two to three weeks, you are technically renewed, at least on the outside. Red blood cells that you see right here and that we started with usually take about four months. Whereas that stuff that's protecting us right now from all sorts of infections, including, of course, the pandemic that's going on, the white blood cells can last anywhere from a few days to just a little bit over a week. And so their lifespan varies quite a lot and obviously decreases quite dramatically, especially when the body is infected, such as, for example, when you get the flu. And then we obviously have a few more misconceptions. I've read somewhere once, or actually might have heard it from someone, that the fat cells in your body kind of stay with you throughout your whole life. And it might have been actually from a personal trainer or someone I trained with a long time ago, but they were basically saying that once you get fat, uh, your cells in your body grow in size and they might actually stay stretched and permanently disfigured for the rest of your life. In other words, people were trying to scare me not to eat too much and not to get fat. That's actually incorrect though. Fat cells do actually have a lifespan of about 10 years. So after 10 years, they disappear. And so if after 10 years you lost a lot of weight, you can totally replenish your body and once again, look very beautiful like you did maybe when you were younger. Which of course means that getting back in shape and becoming healthy can totally be done even years and years after your body became out of shape. Which is of course something that a lot of us are currently struggling with. During the pandemic, most of us are not really exercising as much. But what's really curious about the discovery from this particular study is how intensive this process of replacing your body cells is. Everything gets replaced a lot and some things like the blood cells get replaced the most. This is actually the cell that gets replaced in your body most frequently. But in total, every single second, around 3.8 million cells get replaced in your body, representing about 330 billion cells per day. That's about 40 times the total population of Earth every single day. That means that every day, roughly around 80 grams of you gets replaced. Now, that could be more if you're an active person and if also your metabolism is a lot better than some other people. And it can also be less if, for example, you're older or depending on a lot of other factors. But on average, it's 80 grams every single day, which is actually about half of my cell phone. So basically, in my body right now, half of my cell phone is being replaced by mass every single day. And not surprisingly, 90% of all of the cells being replaced are, of course, the erythrocytes, the blood cells. But that's actually only by number. By weight, surprisingly, they only represent about 48%. 
By weight, it's actually your gastrointestinal cells or your digestive system cells, such as the lining of your stomach, the lining from your guts, that represents about 42% of all of the mass being recycled, with the skin being about 4% of the total mass. But what's interesting here are the fat cells. Even though only a few of them get replaced inside your body every single day, mostly because they get to live about 10 years in total, by mass they do represent about 4% of your total exchange. And the more you exercise, the bigger this number gets. So basically, in this case, exercise does actually change the balance of the total number of cells being replenished in your body. And everything else in your body usually gets replaced as well, but to a much lesser extent. Like, for example, about 0.1% of all of the cells being replaced are the cells inside your lungs. You can obviously learn more about other cells by looking at the paper in the description below. But all of these cells that are being replaced mostly get used up by something else. A lot of them actually get eaten by certain things, like for example your other cells or possibly even parasites in your body. And I guess I'm not sure if I should be telling you this, but your body is covered with these mites pretty much everywhere. You have a lot of them inside your eyelashes, you have a lot of them on your skin, and they do eat a lot of your skin. So a lot of the uh, cells end up inside their bodies, but they're absolutely necessary for our survival because they do protect us from other parasites and from infections. So don't get too freaked out by all of these little spiders crawling all over you. Okay, I should not have used the word spiders. They're mites, they're not spiders. And a lot of other cells, including red blood cells, do get recycled by the body and essentially end up producing something else using exactly the same proteins that they were made out of as well. So this is a pretty effective process and it does actually play a big role in keeping us who we are and in keeping us alive and functioning. But another interesting fact coming out of all of these studies is the total number of cells in your body and of course the unusual number of, in some sense, foreign cells, in this case bacteria. It turns out that inside our bodies right now, pretty much for most of us, although it does actually differ based on your diet, we generally have exactly the same number of our own cells and bacteria. And that number is 38 trillion. There are 38 trillion cells and there are roughly around 38 trillion bacteria inside our bodies. Both are dependent on one another. The bacteria, for example, are responsible for a lot of digestion inside of us. But even though the body might be about 70 kilograms or about 150 pounds, the bacteria only represent about 0.2 kilograms. And that's of course because they're much smaller, they're a lot less complicated, and they just don't really weigh enough. But all of these are completely new discoveries. We mostly did not know most of this up until a few years or possibly maximum a decade ago. Most of this is coming from the literature and the way that the study was conducted is by essentially looking at various studies where numbers of cells or mass of cells was calculated and then combining all of this knowledge together to then essentially figure out how many cells we have, how many of them get replenished and what's the total number of cells being replenished in the body on average. Now these numbers might change because some of the literature might be outdated or some of the studies might actually change their numbers, but for now that's kind of what we think. So we have 38 trillion cells, about 3.8 million cells per second get replenished, the majority are the red blood cells, with a lot of other cells being the ones in your belly and in your intestines. But some of them do not get replenished at all. The animal in your teeth, the lens of your eye and the majority of the cells in your brain, with certain exceptions. And so now hopefully you know a little bit more about your own body and bodies around you. And these incredible studies in medicine are usually extremely important for us in learning more about our own bodies and in helping us understand what we can possibly do to improve the medical knowledge that we currently have. And one day we'll probably be able to find a way to even replace cells that we currently can't really do very well. And so even though today we know how to, for example, fix someone's tooth, or how to replace a lens with an artificial lens when someone is losing vision, we still don't really have a very good idea on how to replace someone's neurons. And that is something that hopefully we'll learn one day. But anyway, for now that's all I wanted to mention in this video. Check out all of the links and all of the studies in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space science and in this case biology and medicine, and come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support us channel on Patreon or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description below. Either way, I'll see you tomorrow. Stay wonderful and as always, bye-bye.